And as you can see, you can choose this gallery view. You can um, choose to have a speaker view. If you go up to the view button in the upper right hand corner of your screen, many of you probably know that, you can select if you want that speaker view to see the main speaker or if you want to see kind of the whole um, the group, kind of like the Brady Bunch effect. So with that, we are going to go ahead and get started. Well, good evening um, and welcome to the North Dakota 4-H Virtual Volunteer Project Training. We are so excited to have you joining us this evening. As we get started, we would like you to, again, make sure your mic is, is working and we would also love for you to turn on your cameras if at all possible because we want to see your smiling faces out there as we have um, discussion and interaction tonight. Um, if you haven't already, one more time I will mention because there's a few people still joining, we'd love to have you enter your name and the county or community where you're coming from in the chat on the right, um, that will show up on the right hand side if you select that. With that, I'm going to go ahead and just share. The agenda for this evening. As you can see, we have a full agenda for our two hours together. First was this welcome by me. Then we're going to be um, having some 4-H Foundation remarks from Paige Brumman, who's one of our 4-H Foundation board members. We are going to have our 4-H specialists give us some quick highlights about their program areas so you can say hi to them um, since we're not coming to you face to face this year. Then we have our two sessions, beefing up your beef topics and stress less, making your 4-H club meetings easier. And then we are going to do just a quick wrap up and share the evaluation link. As we move forward tonight, um, I would like you to be aware of three things that we want to share because we know you're busy people and if you can't hang on to the end, we did want you to be able to have that evaluation link. So Mickey is going to quickly drop the evaluation link for tonight in the chat so you have access to that. And when you click on that link, that will take you directly to one of our Qualtrics evaluations. So you can fill that out throughout the evening or you can go ahead and just do that at the end. We will share it again at the end. The second thing I wanted to encourage you to do was think about joining us for the November 12th and the November 19th sessions. We are covering different 4-H project areas in those sessions and we can't wait to see your smiling faces on, on those two. And again, you can register for those just like you did for this one. Finally, um, one of the exciting things we want to roll out, and you'll be receiving more information um, through 4-H online in, uh, um, in the near future, is the 4-H Easy Online Training for Community Club Success. I've worked with a couple other specialists from across the North Central region to develop a a set of videos, resources, handouts, materials that you can use as 4-H volunteers to make your 4-H club work easy or easier, hopefully. Um, and those resources are things that you can work through on your own. You don't have to be with us like a night like tonight. So just wanted to share that. And again, Mickey will drop that um, into the chat and we'll share it again at the end of this evening. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I would like to welcome Paige Brumman, our North Dakota 4-H Foundation board member, to share a couple words with us. Hi, everyone. Um, like she said, my name is Paige Brumman, and I'm an extension agent up in Ward County in Minot, but I also serve as a member of the 4-H Foundation board as a representative from the North Dakota Association of Agricultural Agents. So the North Dakota 4-H Foundation is very happy again to be part of the volunteer project trainings tonight and to support the North Dakota 4-H program. The foundation's mission is to help provide financial resources to support North Dakota 4-Hers. So in other words, we, we raise money, we fundraise. Um, we've just completed our 60th year of being a part of North Dakota 4-H. So what are some of the ways that we support 4-H? We provide financial support to many of the programs in extension. Um, such as the 4-H Youth Extension Conference, the 4-H State Ambassador Program, the Ever-Growing Shooting Sports Program, multiple judging contests, livestock, horse meats, lands, range judging, just to name a few of them. 
uh, these type of volunteer training events that are happening tonight in the next couple of weeks and many, many more activities. The foundation also supports trips to the National 4-H Conference in Washington, D.C. for North Dakota members and the National 4-H Congress in Atlanta, Georgia. The foundation also supports activities at the North Dakota State Fair. They work with uh, donors to provide approximately a dozen different college scholarships each year. And normally we'd hold an annual awards luncheon face-to-face -face where we recognize some of the people that make 4-H very successful. That'll look a little bit different this year, just like many things. Uh, the foundation gives out a Century Family Award that recognizes families that have 100 years or more of combined 4-H involvement. So be thinking of families in your communities and your counties that might fit that, that um, criteria. We also select people to the North Dakota 4-H Hall of Fame and we work with the Center of 4-H to recognize an Outstanding Volunteer of the Year Award. Something else that's of interest is the foundation owns the 4-H camp near Washburn and works very closely with the 4-H program to put on those camps each summer. So the camp was completely renovated a few years ago and is actually now capable of holding events year round, even in the winter. And hopefully you have or will have in the future an opportunity to experience some of those firsthand, uh, or those upgrades firsthand at the North Dakota 4-H camp. The foundation also owns the Lumen Ranch property near Dickinson and is currently working on the best ways to utilize that property in the future. So I mentioned, uh, you know, raising money and fundraising and we have several different giving opportunities throughout the year. Uh, there's a annual year end appeal letter that will be going out to businesses and a variety of sponsors across the state just in a few weeks here. We're also a part of the NDSU Day of Giving or Giving Day, which occurs on December 1st. And we've been part of the Giving Hearts Day in February for several years. Some of these giving days have um, kind of additional perks because oftentimes your donation is matched and um, your donation that you make or business donation kind of doubles the impact because it's often matched. A few other things that the foundation does is sells uh, kind of personalized paving bricks at camp where you can have a club or a business or a family name on a brick. We currently have a fundraising project going to help develop a patio and outdoor kitchen grilling area near the dining hall. Uh, we work with business partners to develop sponsorships for the 4-H program and we work with the NDSU Alumni Foundation to help provide major gift giving opportunities for the larger donors. So again, we're very proud to have been part of North Dakota 4-H for you know, 60 years now and, and look forward to many, many more years. You can contact any of the foundation board members or the foundation manager, who is Penny Dale, if you have any questions about the 4-H Foundation. Our website is located within the 4-H website. Do a quick search for NDSU 4-H Foundation, you'll find more information there. And then of course, I wanna recognize the, the sponsor for this evening's program, which is the North Dakota Farm Credit Services. And um, actually one of our board members is employed by them as well. So um, I'm not sure if Becky's on tonight. If she is, hi Becky, <laughs> and thanks. Thank you, Paige, and thanks North Dakota 4-H Foundation. A little later, you'll be seeing the North Dakota 4-H um, masks that they are helping um, pay for, and they're helping pay a sponsor, as she said, this um, training tonight. So we want to thank them. Um, next, I'd like to turn it over to do some quick introductions from our 4-H um, specialists. Since we aren't coming to you face-to-face, -face, um, we wanted to give them a quick chance to talk. And I will turn it over to Dean to share a little bit about what's going on with his program. Hi, I, I am Dean Ockrey and I've been on staff here for quite a while. Um, a part of my duties um, are to be the administrator for 4-H online and, and some of those kinds of programs. So uh, if you've uh, been working with the getting enrolled and doing those kind of things uh, um, and, or have an issue, obviously you work through your county office, but they'll contact myself or Mickey or Holly here in the office to hopefully you know, work, work your way through those, those kinds of things. In addition, I work with um, uh, plant sciences and, um, and the contests and things that work with that. So, yeah, so uh, the, the crop judging contest that's held, you know, throughout the winter and as particularly at the winter show and um, range judging and land judging. While I don't officiate those, I work with the specialists that uh, uh, 
our uh, that's their specialty, Dr. Franson and and uh, Dr. Sedovic to uh, help conduct those uh, those events. Also work a little bit with the communication arts program and as well as other things that uh, go along with that. So a variety of things, and I, I just want to put in a plug for I get to be on here as one of the presenters on the 19th, and we're going to do a little session on flags. Um, at your 4-H meeting. Uh, a lot of it will be just protocol and those kinds of things with respect to the, you know, the U.S. flag and so forth, but I'm trying to work out a couple of little games that we can play with that too, just for some kind of general flag knowledge. So I, I hope you'll join us then and uh, I'll jump off now so everybody else gets a chance. Thanks, Dean. Megan, you want to go next? Hey everybody, I'm Megan Hoffman, a 4-H specialist at the Center for 4-H Development in Fargo at NDSU. And I've been here a little over four years now. And some things that I work with, I work with new agent training and I'm really excited to um, help mentor them and get them on board. I also work with professional development for our youth um, development professionals. And I also chair the consumer decision making contest and help out with that and also help out with positive youth development issues and making sure our agents have what they need to conduct programming in their counties and have those programs ready to go when they're called to do programming. Um, one of my favorite programs right now is working with opioid misuse prevention. I have a grant with South Dakota State, so we're um, getting across both states um, promoting um, opioid, opioid misuse prevention in schools and other community programs. I'm also working with some life skills programming that is new and social emotional learning program with middle school students. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now um, going on. It's exciting. So you should definitely come back in two weeks um, from now on the 19th and join me and Dean. And I'm going to be talking to everybody about reimagining and redesigning your 4-H programs from six feet apart. So we know that's kind of all a trendy, trendy topic and really important right now. It's going to be kind of a takeoff from some things I've learned from Michelle Cummings about how to redesign your programming and still meet with those 4-Hers in a safe way. So join us on the 19th. Now I'm going to turn it over to Lindsay. Thanks, Megan. I am Lindsay Leaker, and I obviously am at the Center for 4-H. I am in charge of statewide STEM programming, and I also have a piece with our 4-H camp, so I do 4-H camp programming and staffing. Um, Adrian Buer also helps me with um, those sorts of things at camp, so we're kind of a team. Um, as far as what's going on in STEM right now, we have adapted a lot of our programming to be either in person or virtual. Over the summer, camp was canceled, and so we had many different virtual camps that dealt with STEM. So we had STEM weather camp, we had crime scene camp, we had sewing and coding and all sorts of things. So, so that's kind of been what's, what's going on in, in STEM programming. I do have a Microsoft grant that should be renewed here and a Google grant that's just ending and they, those focus on computer science. So a lot of our focus has been on computer programming and science. Um, but you'll probably see in a lot of your counties that we just pushed out a bunch of cool crime scene kits. And um, I just saw some Facebook posts about the kits today um, for some of the counties and we're really excited about those. So if you're interested in that, please inquire with your extension agent within your county and um, get more information. Um, I will be presenting next week, so the 12th, I believe, and I'm going to be doing some stuff on how to do STEM programming in person and virtually, and we're going to be focusing a lot on breakout and escape room games. So I hope to see you next week. Thanks, Lindsay. Sue, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Well, hi, I'm Sue Kwame. Um, I obviously work at the Center for 4-H, too. And um, my role is leadership and civic engagement. And so um, some of the things I'm involved with is the ambassador program. And right now, in a couple weeks, we have ambassador selections coming up. Uh, our ambassadors over the past um, nine, ten months have gotten really good at putting together um, events online. Some of your youth may have actually um, participated in EYCB this summer, our virtual event, and so that was really cool that to watch youth put together a two-day conference online that really was engaging and fun. And so um, I feel like it's a 
privilege for me to work with them because they really are some amazing youth and I get to watch some really amazing things that way. Um, I do. So there's lots of um, ambassadors. If you have youth in your county that are really leaders and you want to start to think about how they can um, step up to that next level, give me a call or any one of the ambassadors. Um, we do the EYC in the summer and law and again, watch for that to come probably somewhat semi-virtual depending on how things pan out here. But um, we're gonna looking at law, which is um, something that will take place at the Capitol in February and it will probably be um, a hybrid type thing depending on what things are like in our state at that point. Um, Service projects are out, are part of my um, uh, work framework, and one of the things I'd love you to do is if you have youth in your counties that are doing some really amazing things, or even just some great stuff, you know, whatever they're doing for service, send me pictures and email that to me too. I'd love to hear that, and then we can um, share that and on our Facebook page, which is a great way to get your youth recognized for those kinds of things. Um, I'm also in charge of like Project Expo. Um, I work with a grant, a SIFAR grant through um, NIFA USDA um, with a couple of my colleagues in the office, Lindsay and Diane Hahn. And um, oh, and then we're also, there's a new project area that you guys might have seen come out. Um, called the um, nice idea and so it's just a way to help youth start to learn about entrepreneurship and so that's something too that um, your county agents can help you with and some of our ambassadors are trained to help facilitate that too and there'll be more information coming out about that that's about it leanne thanks yes leanne go ahead and share and then she's gonna take it away for part of the evening yes i'm actually gonna cheat and um go ahead and share my screen now because uh, can you guys see that okay with which screen are you guys looking at can you guys see looks that looks okay? great we can yep. see it okay. perfect um so uh i'm gonna cheat and show you a cute picture of my horse and my fur children and so my name is leanne scarpe i oversee the animal science portion of uh, 4-h and i'm actually going to share a link to our NDSU Extension 4-H YouTube channel because we just did a series of showmanship videos um, explaining a lot of really neat things and tips and tricks on eight different species. So if you haven't checked any of those out, definitely spend some time on that. We've got rabbits, poultry, dairy cattle, goats, beef cattle, swine, you name it, it's on there. Um, so definitely check that out if you haven't done that. And I'm going to mention this a little bit later, but we have a really cool program um, going on our first uh, Animal Science Professional Career webinar series. And the first one was yesterday, which was a ton of fun. They will be recorded, so if you miss one, um, you can certainly rewatch them. I'm sharing the link to our Facebook page where you can connect with us there. And you can certainly uh, get through and register through the events on that page. I've got them listed for all the ones that are coming up. Uh, and there's a lot of fun ones coming up too. So definitely would encourage you to get your youth, um, your personal kids, you guys come join us, share it. Uh, we want as many people on there as possible. It's not just for the state of North Dakota. So if you have some family outside of North Dakota, it's welcome to anybody and everyone everywhere. So um, we'd love to have you guys join. I obviously oversee a lot of the, um, livestock contests, horse contests, and stuff like that. So if you guys are ever uh, needing help as coaches and stuff, reach out to us. Uh, I wanna get to know you better and work with you on that aspect too. Maybe you're gearing up for a livestock quiz bowl contest or something, definitely uh, let me know if you guys need help in finding some resources and stuff like that. In fact, so today we're actually talking a little bit about uh, one of the resources that we are actually using the Livestock Quiz Bowl. This is actually a resource that the national contest utilizes as a source of information to pull all of their contest questions regarding beef. And so the reason why I'm bringing this to you today is it is kind of big and it could be intimidating if you haven't seen it yet. 
And so we are basically drawing in these particular resources as a way to um, give more content to you guys as volunteer leaders versus what we've had in the past. And so we're going to start phasing out some of the 4-H curriculum for our, all of our species and phasing in the Ohio resources. If you were to buy this outright, it's $22 from Ohio Extension. But if you get it from us, just go through your extension agent and we at the state level will get a 20% discount so you can order them and it's only $16. So definitely um, ask your, reach out to your extension agents. They should probably have a copy and they can certainly, um, you can just rent it from them. You don't maybe need it, even buy it. So definitely reach out to us because this is a pretty cool resource. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about it and how you can kind of utilize it in your clubs. And so there is a lot of content in here. We're going to go through some of this um, individually because it could be a little bit overwhelming. So the first chapter is super easy, a great info on being a 4-H member, a note to parents, and some other great things. It's a lot of fun. Uh, chapter two is going to start to go through a lot of your just introductory uh, objects. So, you know, selecting your calf, parts of the animal, parts of the skeleton, uh, valuation, frame score. Uh, and so I'm not going to go through everything, but what I do want to kind of show you is some opportunities that you can utilize in your clubs. And so being that there's a lot of virtual club meetings still going on, I kind of wanted to give you guys some tools that you could use. And don't think that this just applies to what I'm showing in front of you. So right now I have a picture of a steer. Well, uh, definitely you can utilize this stuff for anything. Um, so definitely try to adapt this and be creative for your own club meetings. So right in front of you, I have an opportunity where you can start to quiz your youth on the parts of an animal. And so what I've done is I've covered up parts of the animal. And so, for example, um, if I uh, use my uh, pen here and I come over to uh, highlight, if I can hear laser pointer, there we go. Um, it says, anybody in the chat want to guess where this one that I'm circling, what the answer is underneath that one? Somebody brave enough? Enough. Yeah, yeah, nice work, nice work. So what I've done is I've put that colored bar over it and then I've used the animation exit uh, in, in the actual PowerPoint. So now instead of it entering, when I click next, it's going to take that away. And so that's a really easy way to start to quiz them and have something underneath it uh, to show you guys kind of how that works. And so each one of those, you can put fun different ways to annotate it out instead of annotating it, animationing it, is that even a word, in. And so definitely uh, just a fun tool that you can use um, as you start to help educate your youth on the parts of an animal. Maybe you can even do it on breeds. Um, there's a fun way if you're still, if you're doing in person, I know I've utilized this before where you'll get two posters and you have um, the same um, different breeds on the poster. So all these breeds would be on two different posters and you'd split your club into two groups and then they'd have like a start cone and you'd say, okay, so on go, I want you to go take the post-it and I want you to run up and put it on the Hereford. And so then they would run up and put it on the Hereford bowl. And so not only is that a fun way to get rid of some energy, but it's a fun way to be interactive. You're still teaching them something. And again, this doesn't have to pertain to just, um, you know, breeds. Maybe you do feed IDs or something else. It'd be a, just a fun activity. If you're doing it virtually, you can also do the same annotation out on um, the names of them. And so you can just go through and have those labeled and then animation them out. Again, that's the exit an animation, I'm getting my words stumbling. If you're really nice, you want, might want to put an actual word um, choice up above to kind of help them out, uh, just to maybe be a little bit less intimidating, for example. And so you've been, okay, so I've got the word choices of potential uh, beef breeds up on top and go ahead and guess, you know, what is A and start to work through those. And then you can also uh, animate them out, which would, is just a fun thing to do. 
Chapters three and four start to go through management practices and how to work safely with livestock. Um, some fun things here. So for example, you're gonna talk about working safely with animals. And so you're gonna talk about flight zones or blind spots and point of balance and noise sensitivity. And a really fun um, thing that you can do here is, um, you can put in a, uh, let's say, do a, uh, um, I've got a, a little maze here, and then you can play a loud noise. And then you can start My doing, hey, don't go that way. Hey, what about that way? Hey, try to get to the end. How are you guys doing? No, don't go that way, don't go there, stop. And then really distract them with your voice and music. That, that will teach them. You know, oh my gosh, that's so loud. Like, just how would that be? Just yelling at cattle, trying to get them to go where they're going. Um, and then it's just a fun activity to really get them distracted, and they have a lot of fun with it. And it's really simple because all you need is a pencil, a stopwatch, um, and a fun animal type maze. Uh, or maybe you do crossword puzzles or scram word scrambles, are always fun. Um, just a fun way to keep them engaged, but kind of get them understanding, you know, man, if I'm super loud uh, working with my cattle and stuff, maybe that's not the best idea. Another fun animal identification opportunity is, uh, we call it sort cattle, and you can use like beach balls or frisbees are always fun. And you can pick some brands, some fun brands, or maybe even have the kids come up with some brands, to, like two of them, because they would be in groups. And you would put them in a large bucket, and then you would hand the kids a three by five card and be like, okay, um, when I hand you these, these are gonna be your brands, and you're gonna go sort those cattle from that bucket. And so you would say, ready, set, go, and then they have to go sort those from one bucket and take them to the next bucket. So they're taking their cattle from pasture to home. Um, and that's a fun way to learn about brands and identification. You can talk about where people put brands on their animals, um, maybe even talk about how it affects the hide and stuff like that. What's really cool here in North Dakota is we are a brand state and so get guest speakers our brand inspectors love to be engaged with our youth i had him out at camp and he had so much fun and so call up a brand inspector and get them on a virtual zoom call and i guarantee you they would love to talk to your club about um you know where it came into play some of the history and learn all about brands chapter five um talking about health and maintenance preventing disease so uh, this is kind of an uh, interesting opportunity. So I know most of you have cell phones. If so if you want to jump out on your cell phone and go to your text messages for me and start a new text. And in that new text, type in the number 2233. Three. It's at the top of that screen. And you're going to message that. Um, or you actually might have to type something in first. And I know my name's crazy. so. You're going to type in my name to um, get there. So we're going to practice this because I have two of these. And this is a really fun opportunity if you're, again, doing something virtual and you need to get your kids engaged. And so there's a lot of ways that this can be fun. Um, so, And then go ahead and answer that question. So what does biosecurity mean to you? And so when you type that in, um, it, you'll get a text message back saying that you've been joined. So say you join, and then you can then type in something there. Ah, safety, I like it. Healthy animals, very good. Disease, yep, absolutely. And so this particular one that I've picked, it's Pull Everywhere is the name of it. It's free, so you can use it and get the kids. Ooh, that's really good. Love it. Good job, guys. And so um, it's a fun way to get your kids engaged and uh, just really start working through um, different topics. This one's fun because you can type out whole sentences. Cleanliness, love that. Good job. Um, Good stewardship, yeah, yeah, very good. I like this. Uh, and again, it's free, really easy to use. We're gonna use a word scramble here uh, shortly. So um, thank you guys for testing that out. 
safety and health. Very good. Uh, disease prevention. Absolutely. You guys are so smart. I love this. All right, we're going to move on. Um, keep that. Ooh, reducing pathogens. That's so great. Um, and we'll, we'll have that chance to, to do that again on another one, just so you can see another kind of word poll um, for the, the poll everywhere. And um, we just quickly had a chat question about do the PowerPoints come with the curriculum? But do you want to talk just a little bit about that since this has these fun activities in it? um which curriculum are you talking about susan you can unmute this one like when you were showing the pictures of the cattle those are actually directly out of these books oh wait sorry no that's actually out of um i'll actually remind me when we get to resources and i'll show you the exact place that i got those pictures from but there are pictures in this book but i'll i'll show you where i personally love to get pictures of livestock so remind me susan when we get to um the resources so if the leaders are doing this virtually they'll make their own powerpoints up based on this curriculum and find their own pictures and stuff yeah right uh, okay well and are you talking about like uh designing some curriculum for this book i was just maybe i misunderstand i thought we could do this virtually and then just do these activities like you're showing us now yep. Yeah, so I'm trying to give you like just examples like so let's say you you go through the health and maintenance chapter and mm -hmm. you've decided you wanted to talk about preventing diseases. So maybe one of your topics would be biosecurity. So you could use pull everywhere as one of your fun activities. Okay, so the the, the poster one where you had the the animals. Yep. You you created that PowerPoint slide. Yep, this this okay. is something I created. Yeah. And so like okay. I I'll show you. Um it's actually Oklahoma State University, if any of you guys have been there. And I have the link in one of the documents that I gave you and I'll I'll show you where that's at. But these pictures are directly out of that website because I really like where they they have them and and it's a fun one because uh Oklahoma not only has the pictures, but they have all of the background behind the breed on it too. Mm -hmm. um so yeah i just i pulled all of those those in That's thank you one. yep yeah great question thanks so much for asking and please don't be afraid to ask questions this is a judgment-free zone and we are here to help you and so i want you guys to speak up if you have any question at all i i would love to try to answer it so reproduction is always, I feel like these are the two topics that are the um, hardest for people to teach. I would highly encourage if you have a local butcher somewhere, go find a real reproductive track. Kids love to dive into these things. Um, I guarantee you they'll just give them away because they're gonna get thrown away anyways because they're inedibles. And so uh, there's so much fun to, you know, have the kids cut up and do fun things and label them. Um, if you have big enough freezer space, you can actually reuse them a couple times. It's what we did when I was teaching the reproductive and endocrinology and histology class down at the University of Florida. And so, um, you know, if you can definitely uh, get those, um, you know chain to come in and and, and stuff so it's it, it's a it's a fun source and it's it should be free um and then too uh, you know you can always do like coloring charts i know that most uh of the individuals always laugh when it comes to reproductive stuff and so usually that gets taught to the older kids Obviously, when it comes to digestive systems, if we're talking um, chapter seven has quite a bit of nutrition and feeding stuff in it. Um, lots of fun things that you can do with this particular chapter uh, when you're reading through it. Um, in terms of feed labeling and stuff, um, there's a resource that was underneath our volunteer training stuff. And it has, uh, it's a PDF, I believe it's the first one listed on there. It actually has three different lesson plans that were developed off of the common measures that we did when we were going through some of that research study. And they're really good. And one of them is all about feed, uh, medication labels. Um, one of them, 
is about injection sites and how to use a banana. We actually, if you were attended the volunteer training last year, it's the exact ones that we covered in, in that volunteer training. Uh, so if you can't find those and you, you want them back, they're up there for you guys to utilize. And so chapter seven has some really good stuff. Obviously you can use these as coloring stuff. So if you want, um, let's again, use that annotation uh, option where uh, you guys use the annotation at the beginning of the um, tonight and she had you guys find some stuff. So in this time, if you want to um, go ahead and either pick a stamp or you can draw and if you can locate the reticulum and color that in for me or put a stamp on the reticulum of this ruminant digestive system. Anybody brave? All right, got some good guesses going here. Anybody else? Anybody else? We got one, one correct answer on there. All right, got some good guesses. Good job, guys. So one thing I love um, to teach is obviously not just the parts of the digestive system, but how the digestive system um, sits in the animal too. So um, you guys did a really good job. Whoever put the mark on five, um, that is a great answer. Again, um, just kind of doing um, the uh, the away annotations or the exit annotations, again, you can go ahead and do that option too if you're doing this virtually with a picture. So um, the reticulum is number five. And um, it's fun to kind of, you know, if you were to talk about the reticulum and then show it how it sits in the animal and, um, you know, down uh, here, I guess I can clear some of those annotations. Um, and uh, it's kind of fun because uh, if you see down here, the reticulum sits down here. It's also known for uh, hardware disease or bovine traumatic reticulopericonditis because it's where uh, oftentimes, if you think of where it sits, uh, gravity is going to come down through the esophagus. And when our lovely cattle, particularly dairy cattle, eat sharp metal objects, it's going to sit in the reticulum. And so it's often known as hardware disease. And so it's a fun way to show them where it sits in the animal after talking about it. Um, so that's always fun. Another one you can do for nutrition is go on a forage scavenger hunt. That would be cool. You can do that either in person, all go out together, or if you're doing this virtually, have each of the individuals go out at their own home and gather different uh, forages that they have in their yard. And so that's a fun opportunity to bring back and start to identify different things. If it's edible, if it's poisonous, is it a weed um, to come back and, and show, you know, maybe some of your youth actually have animals and they bring back grass versus alfalfa. And so you can start to show um, your club members some of the different uh, forage components that you might feed an animal. Maybe somebody actually has some silage and they can talk about silage. Uh, so that's always a fun option too. Chapter eight um, is a uh, beef carcass evaluation. This is a fun one where I've seen a lot of neat opportunities that the clubs do with their kids to get through this chapter. It might be that some of the kids actually have an animal and they go out and they label the different beef cuts on their beef animal. That's always super fun and having them take pictures of it. Uh, another fun one is you know, having something in classroom where you are walking them through it and then you can cut out um, all of the different beef cuts and, and actually put them on the carcass where they go. And it's a really cool thing that you can reach out to the North Dakota Beef Commission because they actually have a lot of these things for free and they want to connect with you. And so they have the beef cuts or you can even print these off of um, the actual website. And so don't be afraid to just jump on their website. I'm gonna actually put some links in the, um, in the uh, 
chat box for you in case you want to just click on those and kind of see where those are located. Um, but there's a couple different ones that they have a lot of different charts that you can print out or call them up and order them. Um, I'm pretty sure most of them are free or they have an education classroom resource um, opportunity too that you can go on and look at that material. They also uh, can have uh, maybe a poster. You guys make a poster and share them virtually or in person. Maybe you do byproduct charts where the kids uh, go through different uh, byproducts that are made from cattle and you put them to paper. That's always a fun activity that you can do to go through that chapter and start to learn um, some of those things. Chapter nine is getting ready for the show pen. And so this is a fun way to uh, start to identify um, some different things. We are going to be gearing up the Animal Science Program Planning Committee to work on some fitting and grooming a virtual series for now. Um, it's gonna be a little bit down the road, but we've, we're starting to identify some individuals to bring together and do kind of like we did the showmanship series in the uh, beginning of the summer. We're gonna do a fitting series for different species and then eventually we'll have those uh, in person too, but um, that will be coming. Don't be afraid to go ahead and uh, jump on the, I'm gonna share this link with you guys too. This is a video that we developed on biosecurity. It's really simple for you guys to jump on and show your clubs that, whether you're virtually and sharing a screen like I'm doing right now via Zoom, or even give the link out to your club members and they can watch it on their own time. Or if you're doing an in-person club, sit down and watch it together, eat some popcorn. Um, maybe if it's got butter on it, you know, talk about that too. Um, so biosecurity video, it's, it's super short, six minute video, um, but it's a great introductory way if you wanted to start to talk about biosecurity and um, stuff like that. Uh, no, Caroline, these hands-on activities are things that I just came up with. Um, they are not in the, uh, the actual resource manual. The, that's a great question. This resource book is just content. It doesn't actually have like 4-H learning activities. These are just stuff that I've come up with. And if you ever need ideas, you know, reach out to your extension agent. Maybe I can even give you some ideas. These are just things that I have uh, come up with on my own to help you guys start to connect with this resource book and start to think of different fun things you can do with each chapter. The marketing one is a lot of fun, chapter 10. There's so much you can do here and it might be a little bit outside of your comfort zone, but it's it's just a really cool opportunity to really get our youth engaged in public speaking and communication. And that might be they learn how to do an infographic design. It might be the photo contest that you host. It might be recording a demonstration um, on, you know, maybe their sale prepping. Uh, maybe it's even design a production sale ad with their own animal um, and learning, you know, what goes into an ad? Why would you want an ad? Where would you put the ad? Um, how, how do you even design an infographic design? Um, so, uh, yes, the local ag ed teachers are very good source. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing that. So, you know, don't you start to think outside the box um, when you start to come through this content. There's so many things that you can do. Um, with it. So chapter 11 with the dairy beef, um, there's a lot of things here. And so we're going to use a different type. So bring out those phones again. And um, if you do more than one word, you need to put a dash in between it for this particular one. This one's going to be a word cloud, just so you guys can see what it looks like. So what do I need to bring with me to the show? And so go ahead and type that in. Yep, feed. That's obviously one of the most important ones, right? Um, and when you start to see the ones that are big, those are the ones that are, those words are the most common ones that are being thrown out there. And so this is a fun way for the kids 
just to kind of see what else is coming in from their other club members. If you're doing this virtually, even if you're in person, you can still use this. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's fun for them to engage. Most likely they have a cell phone of some sort. Uh, you can also use it on an iPad or a computer so you don't actually have to have this pull everywhere on a cell phone, um, but it is a fun way to actually get them engaged. Good job, guys. And I love how it turns the different color and it moves around so it keeps the kids engaged and it's just a lot of fun um, to use the poll everywhere. Um, and I'm glad it looks like you guys are figuring it out really well. So I've got lots of answers on there. So it's fun. That, thank you guys for participating with me so you can kind of see how this works um, and use it hopefully in your clubs. It's, it's just really fun activity. So thank you guys. All right, moving on. Chapter 12, Caring for Animals, uh, goes through, you know, privileges and responsibility, animal well-being. We're going to get to the quality assurance, and that's where you can definitely bring in our Youth for the Quality Care of Animals material. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with that or maybe have never heard of it, it is required for our North Dakota State Fair 4-Hers to show their livestock. And so I'm going to share our link in the chat right now to um, everyone for our YQCA page on North Dakota 4-H, just in case you wanted to jump on there and learn a little bit more about it. Um, it's a really neat program. You can do it on the web right now. Actually, the web version is the only option. They don't want our agents um, to be doing this in person right now. Uh, and they certainly don't want them to be doing it virtually because you can't guarantee that the kid on the other side of the video is paying attention to become certified. And so, um, you know, this is a, a really great opportunity to incorporate with this chapter 13, um, or sorry, chapter 12, talking about uh, different things. So if you have any more questions on YQCA, feel free to um, reach out to me. There is a brochure also on that website that you can print out to learn more about it. Um, but definitely feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions on that. Chapter 13 is all about environmental assurance. And this one's really good because I love that this chapter really teaches our youth that as a 4-H producer, you serve as a youth ambassador for the industry. And this isn't just for beef, it's for any species, but I really like how this book uh, pinpoints how important that is. Chapter 14, you know, what's, we don't often think about public relations. When they go to the county fair or the state fair or achievement days, it's fun to start to role play with our youth and get them thinking about what happens if they're approached by some fair goer that asks them questions. What are they gonna say? How are they gonna prepare for those things? What if a protester were to approach your youth at the state fair? Or what if the media were to approach your youth at the state fair? And so it's really a good idea to start thinking about um, prior to those role play with your youth, get them talking with public speaking skills, communication skills, start to be thinking about some of these things because it's a definite real thing that happens. And I love that this book uh, brings this forward because I think it's something that we often forget. Chapter 15 talks about careers in animal science, uh, which is a lot of fun. There's so many, that, that opportunity is endless. Um, I do, again, putting in a, a point for our webinar series that's going on right now. We just had the Royal Vista Southwest and Megan did a fantastic job. Um, again, if you go to our Facebook page, you can see all of those. Uh, you can register for them. Registration is required, but they are free. We want as many people to join as possible. So please, if you have family anywhere all over the world, um, shoot them that link and get them connected to our Facebook page. Uh, and um, they can certainly uh, join us and, and, and register on there for free. Uh, the recordings will probably be on the NDSU 4-H YouTube channel uh, with the showmanship ones after they get edited by Scott. That's a great question, Sarah. So they are going to be recorded, um, but obviously it'll take a little while for those to get out. And finally, come into the end here, uh, glossary and resources. It gives you some online resources, uh, some places to connect with, some organizations to think about. Um, 
the beef kit, uh, I'll talk to about that here in next slide. This is something that I did hand out. And so um, oh, got my little laser pointer, I think. So um, on this, you can print this out. This was uh, underneath my material list to print out. And so um, this very last one uh, down here, the Oklahoma State University has so many different lists of um, livestock species on there. And I really like how detailed they are. Obviously you have a list in this beef resource handbook, but it does not give you every single uh, um, different, you know, beef animal out there. And so if you wanna really get your, you thinking about lots of different things, um, and, and different species and not just beef animals, lots of different species on there, even horses and stuff. Definitely visit that Oklahoma site. But I really generated this for you guys because I know one of the biggest things um, as a volunteer, it's really hard to find resources. And so you'll find in some of these universities, they have lesson plans already created for you. I didn't pull individually ones because uh, some of them are, are pretty technical and some of them are easy. And so if you ever have a question with one, reach out to your extension agent or you can reach out to me and maybe we can help you um, soften some of the terminology or something. You know, don't be afraid to help have some of us help you maybe change it a little bit. Um, there's some really good, um, opportunities on here in terms of the national ag in the classroom i think people don't think about that organization very often but if you go on there and type in the little search thing you can find some really cool resources like the remarkable ruminant is a really fun lesson plan um, different beef councils and checkoffs in different states have a lot of cool things so it's kind of fun to just go to different states and check out their beef checkoff program and they have some fun stuff um, even, uh, and I have some, some listed on some other, other pages here in a minute too. Uh, definitely don't, if you haven't ever seen our learning lab kits, definitely uh, engage with these things. They're pretty cool. Um, we have, they're not just for beef. I don't, I did not um, put this on that particular thing, but I just put it in the, um, the, the chat box for you and definitely connect with your extension agent and they can help you get these and check them check get them checked out it's free to check them out if you want to buy them they're pretty expensive this particular one's 429 dollars if you wanted to raise that kind of funds for your club but they're really rich in new i just about said nutrition um information and they have lots of fun activities. For example, those really big colorful ones, the pink, purple, green, teal, and red ones on one side, they have like parts of things and, and to identify. And then when you flip it over, um, they're all removed and they come with like little Velcro items. So the kids have to go and Velcro the correct answer on it. And then if they need the answers, they can always flip it over. Um, lots of uh, breed cards. There's uh, some of these kits, you know, there's goat, there's swine, there's horse, there's, um, there's sheep, there's uh, just a lot of these uh, trunks. And that's not just livestock or animal trunks. There's a tons of different trunks on there. So check out that website and you can always um, uh, utilize that resource uh, from us. It's a free resource. Uh, they're, they're really cool. Um, got a lot of material in them. So definitely something if you're going through one of these chapters in here and you need something to complement that chapter, these are some really cool sources to use. Um, and that last part of this chapter has a lot of different stuff, a lot of color photos, so some more breed photos, um, some retail cut stuff. Uh, I really like that they have some pictures and needles to kind of help the kids identify some different things. You know, what does a sharp needle look like? This would be a perfect opportunity to bring this forward when you're talking about injection, injections and injection sites. Maybe when you do the banana um, injection uh, uh, lesson plan that I have for you in that first PDF um, listed on our site. This is a perfect thing for that. Has some different videos um, or pictures of. Um, uh, grains and stuff that they can identify too, which is fun. 
these are some of the other resources that I was thinking about. So Ag in the Classroom, that's the name of the one I was, I was talking about. Every state has an Ag in the Classroom. And so it's fun to go to different states and kind of see what's on their site for Ag in the Classroom. Minnesota has a lot of good stuff. Um, the National Agriculture Classroom, I already talked about that. The stakes are high as a fun just game. Um, I think I might, I think I listed uh, those on um, that handout, but I'll share some more links in the chat box for you guys. Um, and you can copy and paste those links right out of there if you're on a computer as well. And I can certainly share those. Even when I was looking for stuff for you guys, just to kind of come up with some resources, I found this. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but this was really cool. Um, it's out of Canada. I'm gonna share the link in here right now. Um, and it would just, it's just a fun opportunity. You can click on each one of these and seriously, as the person is talking, you can move the screen and do a 360 view tour of where they're at. And so you can go through the chicken farm, the sheep farm, an apple orchard. And it was so fun. Like, I think I sat there for 30 minutes playing with this. And so there's the opportunities are endless and you can use these to complement like this beef resource handbook when you're going through things um, to get the kids engaged and, and start to do some fun stuff. So Paige um, in the chat, uh, she just said that Ward County has a set of these hands-on livestock, livestock learning kits. Um, and so they were purchased with a grant, which is awesome. And just advocating how fun they are. So I imagine you know, if for some reason Ward County wasn't using it and that's closer to you than Fargo, maybe they would let you check it out for a little while. Um, so, and I know Morton County also has a couple to check out if that is closer. So something to think about. With that, that's what I got. And I would love to get any, um, Lamore has the horse one. Thank you so much, Caroline. So she's willing to share the, that one. And that's a $900 kit. That one's one of the most expensive ones, um, but a lot of a rich material in there. Uh, it would take you a week just to get through some of that stuff and use it. Great for hippology, um, horse quiz bowl, all that fun stuff. You know, that's a great thing for if the 4-H um, leaders, uh, your leaders, group has um, money from maybe a 4-H food stand or other things, that's a great way to use some of those um, funds to purchase some of those resources for volunteers to check out in the county. So, mm -hmm. well, thanks, Leanne. I think with that, we are going to go ahead and turn it over to our next speaker, who is Sue Kwame. Um, thank you, Leanne, for all those wonderful resources. Don't forget a lot of those materials are on the 4-H volunteer training um, website and Sue's resources are on there too. So with that, I'll turn it over to Sue. Do we need a stretch break? <laughs> I'm thinking maybe. Um, <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yes, we have like a couple minutes extra, so that would I be can, great. I um, can put like a two minute timer on if everybody wants to just get up and stretch or run to the bathroom or fill your water or whatever. Um, I will just time two minutes and I'll start. Great, thanks Sue. Mm -hmm.
All right, there's my timer. <laughs> I hope everybody made it back in time and got to stretch a little bit. Uh, great. Well, um, I am going to um, talk about some a little bit different than what Leanne was talking about, but I thought it was just so cool because a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about really um, Leanne's stuff ties in really well with it. So um, she really had some really cool ideas. I really appreciate that. Um, so um, we are going to just talking about stressing less. And that um, my topic is really kind of about behavior management, like when we have those troubles with um, youth acting out or that kind of thing. And so um, I want you to just think about this as a way to get some tools. Um, to put in your toolbox and so when you have trouble with youth and one of the things we're going to talk about is we're going to just talk about three little topics um, first we're going to talk about a welcoming environment and setting up your meeting for success and then um, some strategies and i know everybody wants the strategies and all that stuff but really the first two topics are really more about um, being proactive and that can solve a lot of problems and so um we're just going to talk about that because that is really key and it's really key to what 4-h is about too um we're gonna i'm gonna let's see here uh, i gotta figure out <laughs> okay so we're gonna first move right into the first topic called um a welcoming environment and with that i wanted to try to make this a welcoming environment and so this is an activity um like what Leanne was showing you a lot of different things you can do. Um, I'm going to have you do something, but I'm not going to have you start yet. I want you to, um, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do and then we're going to do it. So um, I'm going to have you go into um, your Zoom picture and at the top there's three little dots and if you drop down on those dots there's a place that says go change your name. And so I'm going to have you go into there. And what I want you to do is create like a fun vanity license plate name for yourself. And um, I did this paint crazy one because um, like with during COVID now I kind of got this bad habit <laughs> that I picked up of just painting um, furniture and cabinets and anything that gets in my way. So um, my husband tries to stay out of the house a lot, but, um, and, but what I want you to do since we don't really have much time, I'm giving you about a minute to do this. Um, I'm going to have you go on and then you're going to um, just put, um, you don't have to be creative with letters and numbers and things because that takes a lot of thought. So I just want you to put something in there um, right behind your name. I don't want you to really change your name. Just uh, type behind your name and whatever it is that um, is something that describes you. One, two quick words. All right, you can go and do that now. I love looking at these. Um, oh, very interesting. So um, you've got about 20 seconds to finish this up. Going to quick. I can't see as many of you because of um, I'm presenting, but um, the idea behind this activity is that um, it gives us some, oh my goodness, sorry, I am skipped way ahead here, um, gives us a lot of um, idea about how we can connect with somebody. So when I look at some of your names and I see something like, um, uh, let's see here. Love to ride, Carrie says. So that makes me wonder, is she a motorcycle mama or is she riding a bike? Or maybe, I don't know, a horse? I, I don't know. So it, it's just a, an opening for me to have something to talk to her about and get to know her better and start to create some a welcoming environment. Um, 
these are this is um, a really simple way if you were all in person here or if we were doing this with youth and we had more time i would probably um, provide them paper and pencil or um, markers or they could have that you could have that right in your own place and they could design something color it draw it out and then you know hold it up and show that or do it in a classroom setting but it's just a great way to start to um, get to know each other and start to think about um, that. All right, so the next thing I really want you to think about is your group rules or norms or those guidelines that you have. Um, you might have a piece of paper in front of you or, you know, just think I want to go through some questions and I just want you to kind of be self-reflective in this portion. I'd like you to just think about, um, you know, like what are your group rules? Do you have group rules? Uh, and do youth know what they are? Uh, and then think about, you know, who created them. Uh, sometimes group rules are something that were created maybe by you or by somebody else and they've just been there forever. And maybe you look at them at the beginning of the year when 4-H, 4-H year starts and they get put away and don't maybe get brought out until there's a problem or um, until the next year again when you want to look at them again. And so um, there's just a lot of um, different things when you think about rules. <laughs> Sorry, I, uh, one of the things that um, we can think about too is, you know, who did create them. And you guys, as you're working with youth, you probably know if they have a say in things, they're probably much more likely to um, want to uh, participate in that. And so having youth help create those rules is a good thing. And how do youth know what they are? You know, if you haven't, don't have them posted or whatever. So do you maybe have them posted someplace? Is it something that they um, are posted at each meeting? Maybe you post them on each um, agenda and or emails that come out each time they're there to remind people. And just when youth know um, what the rules are, they can just be a lot more successful. And then can everybody be successful with them? Um, are they just as easy for younger youth as well as older youth to um, be successful or are they um, you know maybe there's somebody that has a disability or a learning disability or something are they able to be able to successful be successful with that too i think about maybe um, you know an eight or ten year old boy that has adhd has a hard time sitting but your rule maybe is to sit quietly through meetings well can he be successful with that or is your rule flexible enough where he can have some type of fidget spinner or something with him or he's able to just pace him quietly in the back of the room while the meeting's going on as long as he's paying attention you know think about how can those rules be adjusted and then do adults and teens model um, these expectations for younger members and i i know a lot of times um i notice it in clubs and groups that i'm in but we have these rules and we think we're good examples but maybe not so what about like cell phones maybe cell phones are not accepted during meetings but um uh, are all youth and older youth and adults following that too i've been in meetings where adults do not follow that you know or how about um maybe um we one of the rules is to make sure that you arrive on time to be um counted as part of that meeting well do all adults and all older teens do that. I know teens are involved in a lot of other things. And so um, how do you handle those kinds of things? And those are just some things to think through so that you can kind of adjust your rules for um, what will work best. And then just, you know, the whole welcoming environment really includes how we respect each other. And are youth accepted for who they are? And sometimes, um, we say we do that, but it's hard and we um, we don't always realize like how some of our actions come across. And so just to think about, you know, do you um, allow youth to pick all the kinds of um, activities and um, projects that they are really interested in? Or do you try to um, steer them towards things that you think they should be interested in? Um, can youth have a, a say? in all of uh, the different projects and um, that you take on. And then even just like when we're not with youth, what kinds of things do we say about them to other adults or whatever? Because I feel like that's something that can actually show um, in our behavior when we're with youth too. And then no bullying. Um, you know, if I had the answer to 
bullying, I probably would not be on here tonight. I'd probably be laying in my million dollar home by the pool or someplace because, um, you know, it's a huge problem. And I'm a school counselor and, and I talk to other counselors and people and really it's, 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 a, it's a huge problem and it's hard. It's, nobody has all the right answers. But one of the things to think about there is, you know, we just want to keep our kids safe from physical and emotional harm. And 4-H is a place that we um, can help them be safe. And so um, even just nipping things right in the bud as we start. You know, um, when you have, um, see something little, just, you know, say we don't use that, that behavior is not allowed here. Let's, um, you know, be kind and referring back to our um, character traits too, that those are something that we expect our youth to follow. And then, um, you know, teasing. Um, I am a teaser. It's part of my personality. I like to tease. I like to have fun. But um, my own children have taught me that that isn't something that works with everybody. My oldest daughter, if I call her any kind of silly name, like a goober or whatever, she thought that was the best term of endearment and she was just so thrilled that I would even think to do that with her. My other daughter just thought I was calling her names and did not like it at all. And so um, that just really leads into those positive relationships that you build with youth. The more you get to know your youth, then maybe, um, if it is something that is in your personality and it works with some of the youth, it's something that maybe you can do, but just be careful because also if we're teasing, it also allows our youth to do that and they may not have the same discretion that you have. All right, so um, we are a little bit ahead of schedule, so I really kind of wanted to try this activity with you. Um, this is another way to just really help um, start to get you and your youth connected with each other. And um, you could do this in person. We're going to do it on Zoom. And so, Mickey, this is where I'm going to need you to help me out with the break rooms. <laughs> um, it's called Three Uncommon Things. And or uncommon common things. And so um, a common thing is I can see Rhonda right now and she kind of has blonde hair like I do. So we kind of have the same hair. And that's a common thing because we can see that. But um, uncommon things are things that you really can't see that you have to work for a little bit. So you're going to go in this room, you're going to have three people and in a minute and a half, you're going to um, be able to identify three things that are kind of uncommon that you all have in common with each other. And so like here, maybe, um, you know, we all like snow or building snowmen. We all like science projects and we have a dog or a pet and like pets. So that was, that's just an example on the board here. So um, on your screen, there should be a little box that will come up to say join a breakout room and if you want to join that and go in quickly to your breakout room and find three co uncommon common things. I ended up being in a breakout room by myself, which is fine, Mickey. You were in one by yourself? Yep, I get I get the picture. No, I'm just kidding. Let me see what who else is supposed to be in there because I can look at a list of everyone. And the, there might have been some of them that are on if they didn't choose to join the breakout room or left, stepped away for a minute, then they wouldn't have gone into it. Yeah, so when I increased it to three people per room, it the, the closest I could get was three or four per room. Mm -hmm. And then when I assigned that, and I'm looking at the list, it still put a couple of people in rooms of two, and I'm, I'm not sure why that's the case. But I'm looking yeah, for that's okay. Well, Rochelle, there's a lot of people here that didn't go to their room. You can yep. see. And oh. that's probably why. And uh -huh. that's um, do Okay, so can we call them back, Nikki? Yeah. 
Um, there's a 60 second timer, so they got a minute to. Oh, okay. Wrap it up. That's perfect then. Just let it go. like where people are slowly coming back they're using all of their 60 seconds to get that mm -hmm. out. Now, i'll just wait a couple minutes looks like we're only at 21 so i hope we didn't lose a lot of people <laughs> they're having so much fun just learning about each other so Okay, so it looks like most people are back. I would like you in the chat box to just um, type in what you think um, a, an activity like this can help you to um, make connections with youth. How can that help you? Or how can it help youth make connections? Either way, how can they make connections with the group or you make connections with each other? Icebreaker, yep. New friendships, belonging, laughter, yeah. And um, one of the things that we'll try to do is capture some of these chat boxes because really you guys learn best from each other too and you have like amazing ideas on how to do a lot of this stuff. So it um, helps you get out of your comfort zo zone and talk to someone new, exactly. Kickstart conversations, find common interests to build relationships. and that really is key with 4-H is building those relationships and so any of these little activities that really just take you a little bit out of your comfort zone and um, can help you learn about youth and sometimes it's hard to like what am I going to talk to them about I don't know but if we have you know a, something that gets us started and gets us an idea that can really spur the conversation all right so we're going to move on to the next thing and we're going to um, talk about setting up your meeting for success And this is probably a lot of things you're doing. And one of the things that I always talk about when I would teach parenting classes, and I think this is very similar to that, is that, um, you know, hopefully you leave with three things. And the first one is just that you uh, pat yourself on the back, like, oh, yeah, I'm already doing that. I'm doing a good job. And then the second thing is that you find a couple things that you're like, oh, I know that's a really good idea and I have not been doing that. I knew that. And so you go back and you add some things that you know you kind of been slack on. And then the third thing hopefully is that you just find some new ideas. And so as we're going through this, I'm hoping you're already starting to, um, you know, find a couple of those different things that you can take away with you. So just be prepared. Um, and we talked about you having those rules in place. That's key for not only helping you feel safe and um, welcome, but also helps our meetings go much better. And um, um, we might. Sue? Yes. Sorry to bug you. Um, share your screen again. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> I didn't no, want to interrupt I it you. Kind of weird. Okay, I, this is so. You know, I watch these young people, and they just flip, 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 flip. There's nothing. There's no. But I. It takes me. A You're little doing bit great. <laughs> I know it's hard to flip back and forth and break it. This is very interactive, so that's awesome. Thanks for sharing again. Yeah. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. So, um, so just be prepared. Um, thinking about how you can um, work with transitions too. Um, I know that there's a lot of youth that have a lot of trouble with transitions. And if we're really kind of honest, um, most of us do too. You know, if I asked you right now, if you were, um, say, uh, sitting on the couch reading your favorite book and um, one of your family members came up and said, hey, I need a glass of water. Are you gonna like jump up and run to the fridge and get a glass of water? Probably not. <laughs> Probably gonna have to finish, you know, that paragraph, 
maybe the page, maybe even the chapter, if it's a really good book, then we're going to stretch and find our shoes and, um, you know, maybe put our glasses back in a case and then head to the fridge. And um, that's something that was kind of a, a little scenario that was told to me many years ago. And it really helps me to just have more passion when I think about that with kids that I work with, because we don't jump up and switch gears like that. And we really can't expect our youth to, especially those youth that have trouble doing that. So come up with some transition things that you can use. Um, you know, one of the things that um, I talked about earlier and I was demonstrating is just saying, you know, in, a, in just a few minutes, we're going to do this and I'm going to tell you what to do and then you're going to get started. And that's just um, a, a transition help. You know, we help kids. Um, I have a little um, club meeting um, outline here and maybe that's every time you follow kind of the same um, thing that makes it more predictable for you and that helps them with transitions and just helps them be more successful and not act out as much in a meeting. Okay and then Sorry, this is, um, I think my internet is slow, so it's not catching up to my clicking. Oh my goodness. I'm going to try it one more time. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, engaging. Make sure your meetings are engaging. And I just love what Leanne did. She had so many great ways to engage youth. When in youth are engaged and learning in something that they're having fun with and um, getting some new skills they're developing, they are going to be much more successful at um, following the rules and not um, getting into trouble and doing those kinds of things while they're at a meeting. And so there was just so many fun ideas that Leanne had. That was really fun to hear all of those things. All right. And then there's a lot of different times um, when problems can happen. And those are um, I've, I've listed a few here, and in just a few minutes, again, I'm going to give you a chance to respond to some of these. So think about what kinds of things work for you in your different clubs. Um, you know, when how do you deal with shy youth that have a hard time joining a group? That can be really difficult for those kids that are being left out. How about um, putting youth in small groups? How do you do that? Again, that can cause some problems when kids are being left out. What about how do you get the most out of your youth leaders so that they're actually engaged in doing things and not just sitting and uh, in the background? What about youth that arrive early? How do you keep them out of trouble? What kinds of things do you do with those youth? And what about the youth that finish early? Um, and they're always done instantly. What, what do you do with them? And then how about if you have groups with many different ages and abilities? What kinds of things do you do for those youth? So what I want you to do in just a minute here, I'm going to have you go into the chat box again. And um, if you have a really good idea for um, how to help a shy youth, I just want you to put number one in there. And then I want you to put the idea down. If you have a really good idea on how to help youth that finish early, just put five and then put your idea in the chat box. And we'll just take a couple minutes to gather some of those. And then I can collect these again and um, we can put them together on a sheet and send them out to you after the. Um, all right, so go ahead and put your ideas in there. Here they come. Now we're doing a uh, blow up the chat box. <laughs> um, uh, number five, for um, you finish early, we help them have them help them organize and get ready for the next thing. Um, for number four, for youth who arrive early, we can take turns having families bring a welcoming activity for youth to do prior to the meeting. Oh, I love that too. Um, I love that you did put that on to back onto the families to help that with that. Um, number six, um, for groups of different ages, break them up into smaller groups based on these. Um, Caroline, for number one, shy youth, she doesn't need a knee, so she um, rotates her activities around like that, um, having youth sit together in different ways, and then I think you'd probably move that circle. <laughs> um, 
um, activity sheets to available to work on to help youth that arrive early, um, writing cards in nur to nursing homes when um, they finish early and there's different age groups. And that's a great transition into some service learning while kids are finishing up with other things. Great ideas. Um, ask them to be the greeter, all for fun. If they're So there's a lot of really good ideas on here and I'm gonna, um, move on because we got a lot to cover but <laughs> um lots of keep come keep them coming and we will just um keep those uh in the background and and try to uh, capture all of those and pass them on to you too so some really great ideas and i love to learn from you all right so we're going to just move into strategies, which is the meat of it. So I'm going to give you some good ideas and then we're going to do some practicing with this and then it works pretty much our night. So um, when we think about strategies, you know, um, what I talked about earlier, I said is really just proactive stuff and being having the best setup and getting everything ready is is not going to solve every problem um, youth are still going to act out and they're going to make bad decisions and the reason for that is just because it's really part of their job and 4-h is a place that is supposed to be a safe welcoming environment for them and so that's a place where um, it's safe for them to learn from the mistakes that they make so when they make a mistake we really want to be able to um, help guide them to correct those mistakes and make better ones for the next time. Um, and, and really that is why that um, now most experts are really believe, um, thinking that um, the zero tolerance policies really are not such a good idea anymore. And a big part of that reason is that even youth that make really serious mistakes, they need to, we need to help them find a way to learn and amend and change. And, and those serious mistakes may not be in your club, you know, to make it help them change. But we do have to find ways for youth to be able to um, be successful. All right, so here's the ideas. We're gonna go through these real quick. Um, ignore, you know, really. Um, there's a lot of um, things that kids do for attention. And if they want to get attention, they um, may not, um, uh, you know, if we put our attention to something that's more positive, it's probably gonna make that um, other activity just go away because they want the attention too. I love the stand close one. I've done this a ton in teaching and things when youth are uh, maybe on their cell phone or they're talking or they're doing something they're not supposed to do. You just go move your body right over and start to continue to do whatever you're doing from that position. And um, it's really uncomfortable for them and they stop most of the time. So um, change the room arrangement or where you sit. You know, if you've got youth in tables lined up um, and you're trying to get some conversation going and it's just not going very well or they're really distracted and not paying attention, maybe you move all the chairs into a circle so that they can see each other and engage better. So just kind of think about what works best and getting down onto kids' levels. Um, kids listen better when we have their eye contact and they can hear and listen to what we're saying and so um it's hard for kids to be successful when they're not really even paying attention to what you said and sometimes we just have to separate you if it just they will do better that way um one of my very first loves is preschool and preschool learning and so what i like about it is it's like all the things we learn are so simple and um easy to follow through on but they're also <laughs> like really uh transitional we can make those work in lots of different ages we gotta just you know adjust it when kids are really little you know we just ask them if they want the red cup or the blue cup but as they get older and got some youth that are kind of messing around and it's time to clean up, we can go over to them and say, Joe, do you want to sweep or wash tables? You know, and so we just give them some really simple things and that helps keep them, and they didn't get an option to not clean in that example. We just give them two examples that are things that we want them to do. Um, redirect or distract. Uh, you know, this could even work in, um, a situation where um, you know some kids are not being very nice to someone I might just walk right into the group and you know say hey guys are you excited about what we're doing for our service work this week what are your thoughts about this and change the topic like that and in some cases that might even be um, some a way to say oh yeah they might think that maybe what we were doing she noticed that and that wasn't so great and then um, just tell what to do or not you know 
rather not than what not to do. Like um, garbage belongs in the garbage can. And instead of don't throw the garbage, you know, so kids will go and they will generally do what we say. Um, just be really watchful and provide guidance when needed and pay attention. If you see a youth that seems really off or crabby or depressed or agitated, um, they probably need a little extra attention from you. And so just those little uh, extra attention or kind words, um, or praise, those kinds of things can really um, maybe turn things around for that youth and help them in another direction. Um, catch them off guard. You know, um, wow, Joe, I really love the way you went over and helped the younger kids get those projects done. You're really a good woodworker and you used your skills and went over there and helped them. I like to see that in a 4-H'er, you know, just make something positive and that kid's going to feel so good about that. He's going to, you know, try to do some more of those kinds of things. And then um, some of the youth that you have problems with, they maybe have problems in other areas too. And their parents have probably already either worked at home or at school or someplace to find some ways that they help their youth be successful. So ask them, you know, what are some suggestions? Um, what do you guys do when this happens? We've had this happen quite a few times now and I just don't really have any other ideas. Do you have some good ideas for me? And that always um, can be a good help too. All right, um, be a broken record. If um, youth, uh, you know, that's just repeating the same rule over and over. <laughs> it's pretty easy to do. Um, uh, set boundaries. Uh, we can, we've already talked about those rules and guidelines and having that in place. You know, when youth know what the rules are, they can be more successful with it too. Um, notice the positive. Think about what kinds of things you've seen in youth. And um, if you're not familiar with uh, positive comments and you know go online and think it look at some things we don't want to always just say um, wow good job way to go great work um, we want you to be specific because those are the kinds of comments that really um, resonate with youth and give them some meaning and something some meat um, good job doesn't really mean much to kids and I know we say that and I'm guilty of it too but I like to remind myself when I say good job I quick add something onto it good job the way you really um, took charge of that activity or you know and I I put my meat at the back or the front of it because I have trouble getting rid of good job so if you're like that too just try to add that on there um, you know maybe um, you need to just take someone aside and talk to them you know I saw the way you were talking to um, that other person in our club and you know um, when we're 4 Hers, we like to follow the character traits and one of those is kindness and so um, we really need to try to work on being more kind to each other and finding kinder ways to talk to each other and so that's just a way to you know, bring those character traits back in and, and refer to them more often too. All right, so, but sometimes we're going to have to have consequences for behavior too because they're not, all these things are not always going to work. So just make sure they're really logical. If a youth has been um, not, um, you know, messing around or something and they get in trouble or they knock something over, break something, hurt someone, um, what can they do that's logical? They can find a way to um, uh, fix or amend it, um, make, a, make something up to somebody that they've hurt to do those kinds of things, um, and always, always allow for a reset. And make those resets quick. You know, I, I think about logical consequences like the, uh, the kid that has way too much energy and gets in trouble because of that, and then he has to sit out on um, recreation time. Well, that's exactly what that kid needs. And so, um, you know, um, we might just even say, wow, you have a lot of energy. You got to blow some off. Maybe you need to just step outside onto the porch for a few minutes. And if you want to do like 25 jumping jacks and then come back in and try it again, you know, we'll give it a try again. And so just make it something really quick and simple and give kids that um, way to just um, try to blow off some steam or whatever it is to help them get back onto track. Um, and we talked about zero tolerance and then just help let youth help set the consequences because if they do it, uh, they're probably going to follow them much better and they're usually going to be much more strict on themselves than you actually even are.
All right, humor. I love humor. I like to have fun. And so just, you know, make fun, but make it about yourself. So you're not teasing other kids and, and making you know, fun of them. Um, find fun in whatever you can. Um, break out into song and dance. I'm going to tell you a joke, okay? This is a really funny one that I just learned, and it's kind of sad, but um, it's a, probably a dad joke. So um, what do you call a wizard who walks everywhere on bare feet, has poor bone density, and really bad breath? A super calloused, fragile, mystic hex by halitosis. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I hope you're all just rolling because that is the funniest joke I have heard. But, all right. We are going to go into practice because we all love to practice. Um, and I think I'm on schedule here. So uh, what we're going to do is um, break into some groups. And um, you're going to be in a small group in a breakout room. And I am going to in the, um, or Mickey's going to help me in the chat box. She's going to post some of our um, little scenarios that I have. I have four different scenarios of things that can happen for when kids get out of, um, they're just not paying attention, not following the rules. And so what I'd like you to do is come up with a list, um, not just one idea how you can solve those, but what are lots of ideas that you have for that? Because um, not the same idea works for every adult to uh, implement it. Not every idea works with the kids that we're implementing them with. So um, uh, you're going to have in the chat box will be a little scenario and it will also say um, what number group should work on that. If you get them mixed up, it's not really that big of a deal. And I'll give you five minutes to come up with some ideas. If you get done with yours, you can Go ahead and talk about another one of them too or just come back to the main room uh right so do we have questions or is that pretty clear hey, so yes are these the behavioral scenarios yes. you're telling me about yes okay perfect if you need help i can put some of them in there too so So in the chat box will be the um, scenarios. And then if you want to um, grab one, um, I don't know if we have. Yep, they're it's showing kind of, up. It's kind of hard to make them look separated, I'm realizing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, OK, so I will go ahead and just read them off to you quick here so that you guys have an idea of what they are before we go into the rooms. Um, all right. So the first one is about 4-Hers who are working on a science experiment in small groups. Sammy, Tyler, and Nate are sitting together and Sammy flicks a rubber band at Tyler. Um, uh, t t when Tyler ignores him, then Nate starts smirking, picks up the rubber band, flicks it back at Sammy, da-da-da. Soon the boys have forgotten what they're supposed to do and they start giggling and throwing the rubber band back and forth. Okay, so that's the first one. Next one is... Um, youth are coming into your meeting, and Audrey is um, extra hyper today. She wants to share everything that has been happening in her house. They got new baby chicks, and her grandma's coming to visit. It's a busy meeting as plans need to be made for the food booth at the fair, and Audrey keeps interrupting to talk about the baby chicks. All right, so that's your second one. The third one is about Tommy. He's got some texture issues and is constantly touching other youth. It's not hurting anyone, but youth have told you it makes them feel uncomfortable. How do you handle that? And the last one. Ah, oh, that was the last one. I must have missed one here. Sorry. Oh, the third. Do you have them all in the box? Because I got two on here. Yeah, right, I've got it in the box. Last one is about some, uh, you have a small club with only five girls. During recreation, you overhear the, a full four of the girls talking about the pants a fifth member is wearing. They're making fun of her and laughing. The girl they are talking about has not heard these comments. You've noticed that she's rarely included with the four girls in activities, and you know these four girls hang out together in other situations. Okay, much deeper one. So go into your groups if you guys want to just pick one and use them. Um, are the breakout rooms ready to go? Yep. Okay, all right.
I see some people have stayed here. So would you guys want to work with me on one of the problems? Sure. <laughs> what, um, which one would you like to do? You pick. Okay, let's do that last one because that's a tough one. Um, small club with five girls. Um, during recreation, you hear four of them talking about the um, one of the girls' pants and then one of the, the the fourth or the fifth member's pants. They make fun of her and they're laughing. The girl they're talking about has not heard these comments, but you've noticed that she's rarely included with the four girls in activities, and you know these four girls hang out together in other situations. All right, what are some ideas you have for that? That's a tough one, I don't know. <laughs> it is tough, isn't it? But is it, does it happen? Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. I guess I would just tell them that that's inappropriate and that they shouldn't be doing that. Okay, yep, that is one way to do it, exactly. And what I want to do is come up with like a few different um, ideas too, because I think, um, you know, um, for one thing, uh, something like this is something that doesn't necessarily get nipped right in the butt in, with one time, you know, we seem to have to keep doing things. Um, and with your idea, I think you could actually like refer back to those character traits too you know, about what makes a good 4-H'er um, -er and how, how we can be respectful to each other in kind. And maybe we have to come up with some of those ideas on how we actually um, get kids into small groups. <laughs> you know, maybe um, we can uh, find games and activities that have changed the participation. Anybody else have other ideas about that? Some thoughts that I had were just, you know, maybe to choose our working groups randomly to come up with some different ways to do that. Um, maybe we draw sticks or um, do um, uh, a random lineup by birth dates and then count off the every third one or you know just find some different ways to do that. Um, have activities that use smaller groups, um, use some team building activities that help us um, even just that little um, activity that we did earlier about you know three uncommon things. Um, putting kids into a situation like that might actually um, find that they have something in common with this little girl and help them to just start to get to know her better too. You guys got any ideas for the texture issues, the little boy that's constantly touching? Fidget toy? That's what I was gonna say too, yep. <laughs> Having some of those different things on the table people can play with. Mm -hmm. Or even given that kid something extra to do maybe to just keep him a little bit focused on something else. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it's okay to even talk to kids about um, you know how we keep our hands to ourselves and especially now during COVID I mean this is a perfect way to help nip some of these things if we have kids together as we can you know all the things they're learning in school about not touching and um, giving people their personal space and that kind of thing too so it might be a good time to uh, put some of those things into practice Okay, so how much time do we have, Nikki? As much as you want. I can give him one minute to bring him back if you want. 
Oh, okay. We didn't put it to. Are we done at what's the time, Rochelle? Eight twenty. Yes, if okay, that's all so right. We better bring him back then. All right, one minute's up. Okay. I just need a couple minutes to just share the evaluation and those things again. So not. Uh, well, I'm going a little long now because I started a little early. These are great ideas. All right, so people are coming back. We'll just give it a few minutes. It always takes a few minutes for people to travel through space. <laughs> I always feel like it's like uh, kind of like the, the movies where people end up from one place to the next. <laughs> Time traveling. All right, just got about 10 people to come back yet. We'll see if we can quick get them back. And then we're gonna just uh, do a quick little wrap up with this. And um, I see in the chat box, we already have a few people put some ideas in there about how they would um, work with some of these things. So we'll talk about that. Um, Nikki, do you see, is there a group still out? Uh, let's see here. No, it looks like they all came back in. Okay. Well, we will um, wrap it up here then. So what are some good ideas that you had to um, work with um, the boys that are messing around with rubber bands? Do you want to open up your mic or just quick type something in? Uh, let's get maybe two or three different ideas that you had for that problem. Uh, Sue, this is Rhonda. Mm -hmm. Millie and I talked about that we would probably go stand by them and then ask them, you know, yeah. oh, it looks like you're having some issues over here, or is there something you don't understand? Just to try to redirect them to get them to get back to the project. Yeah, great. And uh, I get another stand next to them, walk, quietly walk by the table and grab the rubber bands and then keep walking by. So, you know, sometimes we've got to remove the things too. Um, yeah. Any other ideas for that? I guess I said in our group, if it keeps happening multiple times is when I was teaching in egg ed, I would switch spots with the student saying, well, you know what we're doing better than I do. I will sit down in your spot and you can teach um, what we're supposed to be doing. And usually that snaps them out of their funky moods right away. Nice, okay, great. All right, let's move to the next one. Um, youth are coming into your meeting. Aubrey's a very excited one. She wants to share everything, but you got a busy meeting. So how do you deal with that? Very quick, two, three quick ideas. uh mention to the girl that sound that it sounds like she has something ex exciting things happening maybe she could bring some examples of things she feeds her chicks and how she takes care of them okay so letting her um do even maybe a demonstration it sounds like or something showing what she has save her chick story for snack time after the meeting give her a few minutes at the beginning of the meeting to talk all good ideas All right, um, uh, those were all ideas I had too, so um, not any different than I had. And then the next one, Tommy has texture issues and is constantly touching youth. He's not hurting anyone, but youth have to, um, he's making them feel uncomfortable. How do you handle that?
I see some ideas for number four, but um, let's see. Give them something with a lot of texture to hold. Ooh, yes, even those um, cool things you can make with lots of different things on them now. Um, give them something with texture to hold, a lot of different texture things. Yeah, great ideas. And you know, maybe we just even have to talk about, you know, um, appropriateness of how some people like to be touched and some don't too. Have them touch an item, Play-Doh, stress ball, etc. I know Rochelle talked about having a lot of those fidgety things even on the table so that anybody that needs them, because we don't always know who that is. All right. And the fourth one um, is about the girls that are um, not being nice to one girl and leaving her out. And I saw um, already there was one in here, talk with the girls and ask how they would feel if it was them in her shoes. Also, how in 4-H we want to model good character and choose kind over unkind words and actions. Great. Um, and doing an activity in which they find something positive about each of them and then give those to each of the girls. Great ideas. We even talked about in the group that I was in that, you know, that activity of three uncommon things. We might find something. Um, they might find something that they have in common and it might um, be that doorway to opening up a friendship too. Um, Make them compliment each other, have a touch, okay, touch item too. So those are all great, great ideas. You guys have so many good ideas and it's so fun to hear the kinds of things that you do. And hopefully the list that I gave you and the list, there's actually a list on the website that can help you just to kind of refer back and you did get a couple good new ideas to use too. So don't give up, okay? Ask for help if you need it. If it's too big for you, make sure you contact someone in the 4-H office or in your extension office. Um, use what fits your personality. Not all of these things are gonna work for everybody and they don't work for every kid. So we have to find what works for best. And then just don't give up because our youth really do need us. And you guys already have showed me you can have a lot of really creative, fun ideas. All right, that is so, so there's a great example up there with oh. apples. Great, yes. oh! What a cool story. Okay, do an example in a group setting with two apples. One apple is bruised and the other isn't. Ask them to describe the, the one good apple and you as the leader insult the bad apple all, all the time. Explain that words are hurtful and bruise people. Treat each other with respect. Very, very cool example. And there's a lot of those and there's a lot of books and things that you can bring in too. And I just, um, you know, gotta keep, don't give up on them because you gotta keep giving them some ideas, so. All right, I will let, turn it back over to Rochelle. Thank you, Sue, those are excellent. I was jotting things down as fast as I possibly could with for my own 4-H um, club that I, ha that I have with a couple other volunteers. <laughs> Some good things here. I'm always looking for new things. So speaking of new ideas um, that kind of tie right in with what Sue was presenting, I um, shared in the chat a link to, I know you, if you haven't had enough volunteer training tonight and you want some more, you can go to um, the 4-H Easy Club materials um, to make 4-H clubs a little bit easier hopefully for you some ideas some videos and things i put in the chat um, that we developed as north central region volunteer specialists but thanks sue for that i also wanted to share um, the evaluation link and mickey would you pop that in the chat again for me i know we've um done that a few times and speaking of mickey she was kind enough to be our model for the 4-h and ndsu masks that we are going to be um sending out to you uh we mickey has a list of those of you that registered and participated and we will be mailing those out to your counties to be able to pick those up at your local extension offices when you have a chance um, we really appreciate you participating in the north dakota 4-h foundation purchase those so we have some new ndsu slash 4-h masks for you um, as you think about going back um, maybe to have some of those clubs face meetings face to face or virtually but to promote um, North Dakota 4-H um, you'll each be getting one of those and if you participate three times you get three masks so that way you can give them to your kiddos too um, please think about as we mentioned joining us for those November 12th and those November 19th trainings um, we heard a little commer commercials at the beginning of all of this from our volunteer from our specialists and then again I mentioned that training so I just want to say thank you so much for participating tonight 
We know many of you have been on Zoom maybe all day um, doing <laughs> different things for work. We appreciate you taking the time to strengthen your skills related to working and engaging with our youth in North Dakota and our other volunteers. Your time is so valuable and we could not have the North Dakota 4-H program without you. I cannot say enough about that and we really truly do appreciate that. And I want to say thanks so much to our specialists for being on here and providing training and to all of you NDSU extension professionals who are on here too for encouraging your volunteers to participate and taking these ideas back. I hope you'll share them with your other 4-H volunteers out there, all of you and family members. Um, I can't wait to use them with my own 4-H club. So with that, hopefully we'll see some of you again next Thursday night. Hope you get a chance to relax and stretch and enjoy that nice weather we're still having in the next few days. Any questions as we, before we jump off? This is my contact information if you need it. I will stop sharing here and we'll go back to this. Any others or any questions for anyone for Sue with those great club ideas? If not, thank you very much and have a wonderful rest of your evening. We appreciate seeing you on here and look forward to hopefully seeing you next week. Thank you.